I don't know if you saw that up on ESPN, Josh, but they got Scotty at 15 in terms of the top 25, under 25. They get Chet Holmgren ahead of him, who didn't even play last year. Evan Mobley's ahead of him. Maxie's ahead of him. LaMelo Ball's ahead of him. Darius Garland. I mean, these are really good players. But do you get the impression, based on what you've seen out of Scotty early this year, that he's going to start moving up that list? Yeah, I, I imagine that happens pretty quickly here if this breakout season continues, especially after, and I can't believe I'm saying this, a, a bit of a, a coming out party on a global stage the other day, because who would have thought that we'd be talking about a Sunday afternoon in San Antonio as the platform for a coming out party at this time last year, but uh, the the first overall pick and a generational talent rookie phenom in Wembenyama he, he makes that kind of a difference. And obviously viewership numbers for Spurs games are way up this year, but specifically that game on Sunday aired uh, globally across Europe and uh, Africa. I think it was like 120 plus countries or something like that. And yeah, I, I think a lot of people uh, raise their, their eyebrows, open their eyes to, to Scotty Barnes and, and what he's able to do. And, I mean, I've heard from a bunch of people around the league over the last few days that have sort of gone back and looked at what Scotty's done to start this season, and and they've been really impressed. But I think even internally in what this start is doing to kind of change the way the Raptors approach, not only the present, but the future is really interesting to me as well because a few things stand out early in the season. One is that, yes, Scotty Barnes has arrived in a big way, and – while the obvious implication here is that this raises their ceiling in the short and long term, I also think it changes the decision-making process as well, where all of a sudden, with, with every decision they make, they've got to consider, how does this impact Scotty? Does this help Scotty? If they weren't doing that already, and obviously they've got some big decisions to make coming up, and it's like, how do you surround him? How, how do you build a team around him that's going to not only bring out the best in him and, and bring out the best in the team? And that leads me to a couple of other major takeaways early in the season is that OG Ananobi has looked like a much better fit next to Barnes than Siakam. And Siakam has really, really struggled finding his place in Darko's new system. So that's the question here is how does Scotty's emergence impact the decisions that this front office are going to have to make in regards to Ananobi and Siakam, both impending for agents. J. Lou, are we getting a little carried away? After the San Antonio game, Hayes said, Scotty Barnes has arrived. Like, what kind of sample size do you need where you're like, <laughs> that statement is true? Because I thought it was insane. I thought it was premature. And... Ridiculous. It was, at the it was same aggressive. Time. It was aggressive. It was aggressive. numbers, though. The guy's I, have, I get it, but it's night. Yeah, we want to talk true. about early in the NHL season. It's yeah. real early in the NBA. Sure. What do you need to see, J. Lou, where you're like, this guy is the real deal. You're seeing it night in, night out against the best in the league. I, I, I only laugh because I'm pretty sure that's the lead of the, the story that I'm currently <laughs> writing here today. So I may, <laughs> I may have to go back and, and there you go. A bit. Great minds. Sure that I don't, 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 don't read that story. Um, but no, I, what I need to see is this only sustained for a longer period of time because he's doing it. Like, I, and I think that's why that Brian Ames was the only person that had that takeaway from that game. A lot of people did. Like I said, league wide, a lot of people were saying, "Okay, well, Scotty Barnes has arrived." Now, Scotty Barnes has been really, really good in just about all of these seven games that he's played to start the season. But it's seven games that I've been seeing. I'm actually less bothered by the statement he has arrived than some of these like people are talking about him being an all-star this season. And that, to me, seems a little crazy because it's like, it's seven games. I remember there was a season where Andrea Bargnani got off to like an amazing start. He had 13 incredible games, and Dwayne Casey was already talking about him being an all-star, and we know what happened there. So sustainability, that's what needs to happen here because everything we're seeing from Scotty Barnes to start the season screams budding superstar. Like, you look at both ends of the floor. I mean, defensively, he's been a monster. The steals, the blocks, the impact that he's had – I tweeted it out earlier. He and OG Ananobi, like as unique a tandem as there is defensively in the league, they're holding teams to like 93 points per 100 possessions or something like that. Crazy. It's like 13 or 14 points fewer than the best team in the league did last year defensively. 
Um, and then on the offensive end, I mean, the three-point shooting is what really stands out here. He has really improved his shot, and I mean, the eye test tells the story as much as the numbers do because it, it looks much better than it did last year. He's looking confident with it. Uh, closing games, like, he, he's been their closer, but that's not even the surprising part to me because he was their closer last year, too. Remember all the big fourth quarters that he had? But the difference this year is that he's not waiting until the fourth quarter to flip the switch and, and really take over games. This is something that he talked about during training camp is he spent all the time in the offseason getting stronger, working on his conditioning in the hopes that he'd be able to make his mark earlier in games and then sustain it over the course of not only 48 minutes, but over the course of a full season. So that to me is the question. Can he continue to hold up in this way to dominate games as thoroughly as he's dominating them right now with massive uh, responsibility and workload on both ends of the floor, but do it for a full season that to me is the one thing that's missing.